Smooth Comics here. I'm back with another manga, uh, comics versus manga video. I want to talk about uh, the difference between superhero characters and and manga superheroes and manga heroes. Now, there's a major difference within the archetypes. Let's look at the Western heroes. Western heroes largely fit the largely fit the strongman archetype. It all goes back to Superman, the first comic book superhero. Actually, hold up. Oh, there. It all goes back to him. Superman was inspired by the the strongman from the 1930s, those people who were super muscular and they can lift as much they can lift as much as possible. They were very popular back in the 30s. Those guys were all about lifting heavy, running fast, all about pulling off certain feats of strength. And you can see that influence in the Superman comics. And to this day, that influence is still visible. You can still see that influence. And that's a very big part of superheroes now to this day when you look at superman superheroes like thor they're always pulling off a feat of strength it's not just busting power like in anime they're always performing some type of busting feat they're always destroying something always blowing something up like like goku goku isn't known for his lifting power he's known for just blowing stuff up in fact, that's how most Shonen battle series go. They're always just blowing something up. The same does not apply for Western heroes. Western heroes like the Fast. They're all he he's always pulling off some amazing feat of speed. Or even characters like Wonder Woman. Her feats come down. You don't see Wonder Woman just punching a planet way. You will see her lifting a lot. Although they probably can punch a planet away. And you see that in, with hero after hero. They're always doing this. They're always doing something like that. That's just how Western comics are. Because we were influenced by the strong men of the 30s. Now, Shonen Battle Series, they're more about destruction. They're destroyers. I don't know the exact influence for this, but Goku, the one who started a battle Shonen, all of his feats just come down to he blows stuff up. He makes things go boom boom. He makes things go boom boom. Even back in the original Dragon Ball, when Master Roshi blew up the moon, that was the biggest feat at that time, and it's a busting feat. This goes down to the power systems. A lot of shonen series rely heavy on complex power systems. While in the West, we're not really big on that. Look at shows like Invincible. There's no power system. Characters just have powers. It's not a power system, they just have powers. X-Men, there's not really a power system. There's a power ranking system, but not really a power system. And that's how a lot of Western media goes. We're not really big on power systems. Every now and then you get a Star Wars where there is a significant power system. But most of the time, that's not really how it goes. Just look at any, like, just look at any Western comic. The most common feat you'll see is someone lifting a lot someone running fast someone just taking stuff those are the most common feats busting feats and things blowing up yeah you see plenty of that but most of it most of the feats you see in western media is just lifting on that's something i've learned to accept about western media it's mostly just strong man how much can you bench bro it's it's gym bro logic it's gym bro logic in western media now, for a Switch of Gender Ninja here, he'll get plenty of busting feats, but since this is a Western comic, we're mostly going to focus on lifting feats. That's why whenever they put a Western character against an anime character in Death Battle, 
they the strength factor always goes to the western characters because that's just how western characters are in anime they like to just blow stuff up that's something i've just come to accept anime just likes blowing stuff up and tell me what you guys think below see you guys later